Achievers, welcome back to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast, a special Easy Achievers Game Podcast, because we're talking 20 years of Xbox. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting digitally with me today, as always, Alex. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm reminis- uh, re- reminiscing. Is that the reminiscing? Right reminis- yeah. Reminiscing. Yeah, you're nailing, you're nailing the, it. Right reminiscing the, the 20, years, 20 years. And I think about it right now. And I'm, t- I'm, uh, I'm about to say my age. I was seven. I was seven when I got my <laughs> Xbox. I, so, I was five when the system released. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, my family did not have an original Xbox. We had a mm-hmm. PS2. So I didn't mm-hmm. really get to experience Xboxes until... Yeah. We're jumping ahead here, but... <clears throat> I didn't really experience Xbox until the 360. And about that same window, um, right when it launched, is when we played mm-hmm. it. But we're... We're skipping ahead. I'm... <clears throat> one of your hosts today, Elijah. The Easy Chiefs Game Podcast, where you found <clears throat> yourself today to talk a little bit about some Xbox. Now... Let's talk about how you can support the show. And you can, of course, on this very YouTube channel or podcast service of your choice, support us in a multitude of ways. Right now on YouTube, you can like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. That's all the ways you can help us with the algorithm. Algorithms. Of course, if you're on a podcast service of your choice, you can then do a five-star review. That helps out incredibly. Any five-star review you leave is like 70,000 likes on a YouTube show. So you are technically better than someone who likes a video on YouTube, both <laughs> uh, spiritually you're just out, and you're physically. You're just outright better than them. You're outright better in every yeah. single way. Now, if you're a YouTube and you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you are now even better than the person I said before now. Now, if you want to be even better than the person that subscribes, hits the notification bell, and a five-star review, well, I got, I got a way to do that. It's called pay to win. Go over to Easy Achievers, patreon.com slash Easy Achievers. You can donate there. You can give us a buck. There's plenty of tiers that you can utilize there. You can interact with the show with a question, comment, concern, thought, or idea. You can leave your favorite Xbox memories. We can go over that in the next show. You can do a multitude of things to help out not only the show, but yourself to be better than the YouTube or podcast service of your choice. Five-star reviewer slash liker. And you're so much better than everybody already. We have to mention that. <laughs> we have to. We, we have just have to. to. Now, you might get a mention in there. Alex. Hmm. That was the charade that I go on every week. We're done yes. with that now. We're talking about the Xbox. Now, we usually, every Friday, come to you with a news show discussing everything that's happened in the last week. Now, not too much has happened. I feel like... Um, Everything that has happened, we're not going to die with going with a week with talking about it next week. So mm-hmm. hopefully that sits well with all the achievers listening. I suspect it will because not much happened. Um, if you do have an issue, we take all sorts of criticism. Leave it in the comment or Patreon service. If you want to if you want to bite my head off, do it in the comments. <laughs> if you want to bite his head <clears throat> or his head, just tell us. Oh. His head or his head. Oh. Now... Xbox. The Xbox system, Alex, launched November 15th, 2001. In four days as of recording, it will be the official 20th anniversary, and that's why we gathered here today to discuss not only a couple of our thoughts about the systems, the lineage of the system, our our supposed memories, and what brought us to the system and has kept us here for so long. We also are going to talk a little bit of history. We're going to have some fun, some giggles, some gaggles, maybe a little bit of giggle gaggle. Who knows? I can't say yes or no to that, but there might be some giggles. There might be some gaggles. There might even be a giggle or a gaggle. Now, mm. Alex, when we talk about the original Xbox, of course, 2001, I must admit I am not a part of that. I did not play anything. I, again, was five, so... I don't think I had the money around that time to go and purchase an Xbox, nor did I have the uh, willpower to walk to one, to buy one at some sort of EB Games or Walmart. Instead, Mm -hmm. I was playing a PS2. Now, Alex, Mm. if I remember correctly, you had an original Xbox. What were some of your memories of that? Mm. This bulky thing. The Duke? Man. Now, mind you, I'm seven. 
Okay. I'm a short guy. I'm still a short guy now. Yeah. You imagine me at seven years old. Yeah, okay. This yeah, controller is probably the, as big as my face. Okay. And I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like just like in awe and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like just like it's it's an amazement. Now and then I'm like, what you is bring this up the controller do? to quickly sidebar really quick. We can have a whole okay. episode on just on the controller. Oh, for sure. Itself. Oh, for sure. The but Duke. um, but it yeah, the Duke. Uh. I, in my opinion, the first one to popularize offset sticks. Now, oh, for the, sure. the, now the GameCube did have this. It's not, let's mm-hmm. not pretend like it didn't. The GameCube mm-hmm. did have this, but I feel like the Xbox really did popularize the offset sticks mm-hmm. and made it a, almost a assumption that you would have an offset stick. Of course, minus Sony's uh, perspective, but go, please. So, yeah, no, I like me playing it because I came off of playing Halo 1 Combat Evolved on PC. And then I see that they have it on Xbox. Mm. And also, later on, Halo 2. One of the first few games that I've ever played on on that Xbox. Such such a wild ride. So you actually experienced Halo 2 natively on the Xbox. Yes, yeah, oh I did play God. it. Re- I don't remember. I don't think I played it on launch, but okay. I did play. I did play it very first time point. on Xbox original. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Because I think I had two Duke controllers, and I like I would, I would battle it. I battled it out with my cousin. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're talking about this original Xbox, okay. At that time, were you able to use other systems? I know. Um. I know your background specifically, so I, I know you didn't really have two systems, but was this something you gravitated more towards? So, or did you enjoy the 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 actual Xbox more? Of course, you're a child, so don't, you don't really get to pick. It always depends, because but. I... Uh, it depends on the games, because okay. I, had a game, I had a GameCube. Okay, so you did have two systems. Yes, yeah, okay. so GameCube... I couldn't remember which one I had first, but I remember around Christmas time, I, I want to say GameCube was my first one. Okay. And it was awesome because I had got I had Mario Kart Double. I had Mario Kart Double Dash. Mm. I had uh, I had Kirby Air Ride. Still love that game. Yep. And I had Super Smash Brothers Melee. Yes, you did. And then I yes, think maybe did. I had one of the Mario parties, but mm. Mario Kart Double Dash. That's all we were playing like all night, and it was just an amazing thing. And I was like, you know, if I wanted to go to shooters, I have I have my Xbox. Yeah, you got if that I had wanted to play a family game. Got my GameCube. Got GameCube. It's funny that how that. Essentially stayed the same to where oh, we yeah, are for now. Sure. Um, yeah. But really, yeah. I'm, again, I don't have much to add to this other than giving your um, thoughts on this. But like when you mm-hmm. were playing the Xbox, my, what what do I think of it? And again, you were a child, so I don't mm-hmm. know if you even thought this way. But like when you were playing it, did it? Did you? Was it was it special? Was it something like okay, let me go play this Xbox now, or were you more of a GameCube kid? Now, I know you um, said it depends on the game, but like, was it like if you had the choice back then? Do you think you go GameCube or Xbox? I think back then I would have gone GameCube. I, yeah, I figured. I figured. I, I mean, th- this was the point I wanted to make back then. Xbox, although I feel like a lot of people look at it back now as as a as a bigger deal than what it actually was. I feel like it was the mm. secondary for a long time. If you had an Xbox, I feel like mo- mm. majority of the time you had another system. You were probably paying more, and that system was probably a GameCube. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, a no, PlayStation, GameCube. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I had a I had a PS One and mm-hmm. I had a PS Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I mean, GameCube was really my main thing because I was always playing Mario Kart, Mario Party. And uh, eventually, one of my favorite games of all time, still to this day, I hope they bring it out again. Pokemon XD, uh, the, the the dark uh, with, with that with the dark Lugie on the cover. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Love, oh, yes. love that game. Yes. Now, oh, I love that game. when you when you just said um, it kind of struck a chord of me when you uh, when we were talking about kind of like the secondary system with the Xbox. Now, mm-hmm. let's not forget Halo Combat Evolved did launch with the original Xbox. Mm-hmm. Were you able to experience that? I, I I unfortunately yeah. was not able to explain this Halo Combat Evolved and le- until it had come out as the anniversary edition on 360. So I wasn't able to experience like the actual full no, yeah, no, Halo I, One. Was I experienced had- Halo. Yeah, I experienced Halo One and Two on the original Xbox. And then I, even when I went over to a friend's house, they had Halo One on PC. 
And um, I we I experienced that as well because they had they for some reason I don't know why they would use this, but you know that mouse with the big ball. Oh yeah. As, yeah, they would. Yeah, they would have. They would be using that, and I'm like, "How are you using this? This is yes. like some future crap." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember seeing that as a kid and being like, "Whoa, whoa, that's mm-hmm. like, that, in the future we're all going to be using those." And then you realize mm-hmm. how terrible it is, how just yeah, awful that, that thing is. Now, mind you, when I played Halo One on PC, I was already learning how to do first persons because of Quake. Yeah, so you so, had experience. Yeah, yeah. Quake I was very, getting some experience uh, in there. I was about to say Quake is similar to Halo, but it is. It's just not as fast. It's just, um, yeah. It, you're you're way more floaty in mm-hmm. Halo. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. But uh, I know. I Oh, I loved it. I love the, as soon as you start out, the fucking, the original, no, I can hear the original noise of the, of the, oh, sorry, the, the, the Oh, it's like that... muffled. Oh, okay. The original Halo Assault Rifle, yeah. it, like it, it's instead of being like very like precise and no- noise, it sounds more muffled. Remember Mass Effect One when you shoot and it kind of sounds more muffly. Yeah, it's yeah. like that. oh yeah, yeah. I get, I get. Yeah. yeah, it almost sounds like you're shooting through a pillow or something. Yeah, like in a way. Yeah, yeah. I get. I definitely mm-hmm. get what you're saying. Um, yep. So sticking with this, but let's get to about a year later, um, okay. November fifteenth. 2002 is when we find ourselves in Xbox Live. So I would say something that was very popularized as an online service that was always the exception from the get go. Not the exception. was always um, anticipated with the original Xbox um, mm-hmm. because it had the uh, broadband support and eventually Microsoft did know that they were going to want to make some sort of service that people can have an online service that you would have to pay for. Mm-hmm. Skip to a year, we have Xbox Live. Was that something that you also was in the ground floor? Did you have like a an I account didn't get that to was the, online? I didn't get to experience Xbox Live right. till a couple years later. It's pretty expensive, so I, 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 mm-hmm. I wouldn't yeah. be sure. Yeah, yeah, it was expensive, and you know, I'm eight year, nine year old kid yeah. at the time. I'm You're like, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna be like, uh, they're like, hey, can I have an online account for what? For what? Yeah, <laughs> and, and then, I mean, I was. At the time, I was living with my grandma, and you know, an older imagine an older uh, Hispanic lady. She's yeah. not gonna know what the hell she I'm has, talking about. She goes, "What? No." And, and again, bar, it, a- it, might, it might sound strange to maybe the younger achievers out there, but this is at the cusp of online becoming what it is now, where it's and like, it that assumed was, it's and back like, then it was like a kind of thing where you didn't really do you didn't like no that was really around the time where I first I remember the first time I ever got internet in my house. Like, I remember where I had to hook it up, and it was, like, fucking, I think it was DSL. Yeah. And I had an AOL, or I was trying to hook, make an AOL account. Yeah, that that sounds roughly around the time I remember starting to understand a computer. I remember mm-hmm. we had a giant modem right next to the computer. I mean, it, I, and when I say a big modem, Alex, I'm talking, like, like maybe the this. One? I, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> yes, Jesus, like... Like, really, like, the, I mean, it really was a ginormous box Thing. of mm-hmm. of cables and wires. And I remember hooking that up to a computer and being able to kind you kind of experience the web. I remember seeing Yahoo. I remember seeing MSN. Um, Windows XP. Yeah, yeah. Vista. Windows Vista one. I think. Uh, Vista, maybe. Was I, was I on Vista when I did? Yeah, it's, it's maybe when Vista. I, was, I think when I was cognizant of the internet, I was doing Vista. I, I was probably doing some sort of XP nonsense or something, not remembering. I, I don't know, mm-hmm. but no, I'm not too good with the, the years. But yes, uh, yeah, that, that is something that Xbox Live, first off, one of the most important launches for the Xbox, next to, of course, what it launched with was Halo, which is uh, the, the entire reason that we still have an Xbox today is probably because they were able to get Halo on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course they got Halo 2 which was even bigger and then that leads us into Halo 3 but that's that's not until a little bit longer a little bit longer but yes uh, sticking with the original Xbox yeah that, I don't know how much you know about the Xbox Alex but it, at, from this point on we get the Xbox Live service mm-hmm. and really I feel like the Xbox is kind of a stepping stone to what the 360 is going to be it's Xbox mm-hmm. learning it's Microsoft learning a lot. I, I, don't, I don't really think they really knew what they were getting to. I think they knew, like, all right, we're going to make video games. We're going to kind of partner with studios and try to make things. We know Halo is going to be huge. Um, we got um, uh, the Microsoft guy behind him. Why am I blanking on his name right now? I don't know. The guy who made Microsoft. Uh, the C, the, 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 Bill Gates? The C, thank you, Bill Gates. We have Bill Gates behind us. Um, even though he didn't really like 
uh, games back then, he did agree with uh, the Halo thing. He likes that. So he's like, yeah, just put Halo on or whatever. So <laughs> that gets us to get it gets us through xbox live but do you have anything you want to bring up with the original xbox is there something that you want to mention before we leave it i mean it's just there's a lot of games that like if you go back you're like oh my god i remember playing hours upon hours of mm. these games for example one game need for speed underground was that a original xbox that i don't remember that hey, uh, Need for Speed Underground yeah. 2 was a, it was, was my favorite Need for Speed at the time, and it was an Xbox original title. I played that on PS2. Would, yeah, literally, you had your phone, little little sidekick thing, like just like skate. Well, you know, spoilers for next gen. Um, the, the, you would uh, you would start out. I think it was a Nissan 350Z. I think maybe I don't remember which car you started out with. But it tells you you got to go drive somewhere. It's all nighttime. Everything's neon. You God, can your car. you're you're like knocking around some memories that I'm like, whoa. He is you describing can, this perfectly because I remember all of this. You can you you can change your HUD, the colors of the HUD of the dials and the little. Like, I have mine always had like the bird eagle uh, mm. thing, with, with, like with red or green. Mm. And you could just change all that, and you'd have man, oh! And when you use the nitrous, everything would like blur. Yes, oh. yes, yeah, everything oh. blurred around you when you hit nitrous. Oh my god! Oh, you, that is oh my god! That, that is was awesome. like one of my favorite games on Xbox original. Mm-hmm. To this day, even like I wish I could still play it. Like, oh, I, like sometimes I wish I could go back, and I'm like, man, just remaster this game. That would be amazing. Now, I did skip this, and I did forget this was a fact. I actually have it written down here. Uh, I forgot that the Xbox was actually um, revealed to the public by Gates um, mm-hmm. with special guest professional wrestler the Dwayne The Rock Johnson mm-hmm. at CES yeah, say- 2001 in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. January yeah. 3rd, 2001. <laughs> yeah, he, that's why he's such a big partner with Xbox now, because he's, yeah. he originally he, he's the one that helped show off the original xbox microsoft then announced uh the release dates at e3 2001 and then Oof, most of the launch titles were announced then as, as well halo and dead or life 3 and there's a couple other ones um but those are like the most popular things mm-hmm. um and yeah this was actually uh if you remember uh this this is also pulled from the wiki of xbox original console um, the system was officially launched at midnight on November 15, 2001, three days before the subsequent launch of the Nintendo GameCube. A special event mm-hmm. was held on the prior night as part of the grand opening of the flagship store Toys R Us at Times Square in New York City, in which 1,000 systems were shipped to the store to kick off sales. Bill Gates was present at the event, personally selling the first system and greeting people in line, playing games with them at numerous display units present. I remember now, because that year... But there was both, and I got a GameCube first, and then the next year I got an Xbox. So I didn't, I didn't get to have an Xbox at original first day. Okay, but I did have it the that same time period. Okay, those were like a couple months to a year later. I would have to ask my dad if I ever played an Xbox. I, I, as, as far as I understand, yeah. no, I played the GameCube for sure. I do not think we had an Xbox until the 360, and we had mm-hmm. it almost like as soon as it came out. Yeah, I actually sold my Xbox original. I sold it. 13 years ago at a pawn shop nice. my first my first my first sell like sale it was yeah. it was uh, my original xbox man it was hard to like get rid of yeah it. Made a lot of memories but of I, it. yeah but i was going yeah i was mm, I, I was like should i do it should i not but i i was just like yeah you got to yeah, yeah. i mean as a kid you know you, get, you, know, you didn't time, have any other way to make money sold it for 40 bucks Ooh, a lot of a lot of collectors just went oh <gasps> is <laughs> in the chest like oh god Look, 13 years ago in a in a and you know a kid uh, like a teenager kid selling of uh, an xbox original for 40 bucks that was that was i mean that's not bad <laughs> no it's, pre- it's pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear a weird fact hmm in 2002, the Independent Te- Television Commission banned a television advertisement for the original Xbox in the United Kingdom after complaints that, quote, it was offensive, shocking, and in bad taste. What was it, you ask, Alex? It depicted a mother giving birth to a baby boy, fired like a projectile through a window, aging rapidly as he flies through the air. The advertisement ends with an old man crash landing into his own grave and the slogan, quote, life is short, play more, end quote. What? <laughs> was there an Xbox in this commercial at all? 
that is what it was written out. Um, I want. I am going to now go see if I can find the band commercial. Me, I do not think it, reminds, it is available to. It reminds see me that. of the Family Guy game where you're like playing as Stewie or whatever, and in the hospital, and all these pregnant women are shooting out babies out of their crotch, and you have to fight the, all the babies. Okay, it was I a weird game. I think I found it. Oh God. Okay, I, I, I was about to say, are we allowed to show this? I mean, it's on YouTube. Okay, should be fine. How about this? Okay, I'm gonna skip fine. the part. Oh, whoa. Okay, I'm surprised that can't be shown on YouTube. So <laughs> I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip the part where I am kind of like, mm, I don't know if I could show that. So we're gonna do this here. I'm not gonna show the Achievers coin yet. Okay, so we're gonna do it to right here. Okay. All right, Achievers. I'm, we're gonna watch this commercial together. Um, just like this, just in case we're not supposed to. Hold on. You know, well, you know, we're only gonna do. Happen. We're gonna show a little bit. We're gonna show a little bit. And that's not showing much. No, no, it's not showing anything. But this kid is aging pretty fast. Yes, he is. Oh, oh god, god, he's, he's freaking out. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we're gonna skip to this part. We're gonna scrub. We're gonna scrub now. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Oh my god. And uh, as like you said, his Xbox. Oh Jesus, he just hit the grave really fast, and it just ends with "Life is short," and then the original Xbox logo. All right. Uh, hey, weird commercial. <laughs> all right. How does that even tell you what you're gonna go do? I don't know. That's Maybe weird. it's one of those things. Like, I wonder if they like wanted to piss people off to like get people to talk about the Xbox. I don't, who knows? Maybe. Who knows, Alex? Hmm. Something much more in my wheelhouse. The Xbox mm. 360. Oh. When did this launch, Alex? November 22nd, 2005 was the release mm. date. Of course, and I think this was worldwide, actually. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, launched worldwide um, throughout that time period. Short supply, just like everything. It, was, mm. it struggled to launch at first. But, of course, we're talking about the original 360 model. Um, arcade edition. Arcade edition, premium edition, so many different editions when they first came out. And, of course, we'll never forget the detachable hard drive, which at first you were like, oh, that's so cool. And then you realize, like, how annoying it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, I got to buy more of these things? How much is this? 70-something dollars? No, fuck that. Anyways, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so the original 360 is something that has a very, 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 very close to my heart. Um, I love this thing. There's so... It's like, uh, it's like an onion, Alex. There's so mm -hmm. many layers to the 360. Because this is the first um, iteration. And, of course, with its predecessors... Uh, not predecessors, but um, with its kind of parallel PS3. These are the mm -hmm. kind of the first systems that are really showing you internet is in this and you can mm -hmm. do other stuff this is when you start seeing <clears throat> xbox music you remember that mm -hmm. alex xbox mm -hmm. um uh video they're trying to sell you movies on it and you're like what and there's apps what are apps like hey, what do you do remember, with the apps remember, remember the dashboard <laughs> the blades never mm -hmm. forget the blades that of course the first um, actual dashboard that we got dashboard system UI system this is m probably the most interactive UI I guess is how I would want to want to remember you can change all your stuff the you can make uh, colors eventually change they came stuff. with themes we'll never mm -hmm. forget the themes I had the three mm -hmm. I had the gears uh, blades for the longest time I changed mm -hmm. it all the time though because it was so cool to have that changed oh for sure um, but yeah, had the 360 blades. So such a one of my favorite of the and it, and like you just said the when you mm -hmm. when you're going through the blades. So good. Now, did you get your 360 launch or did you get it that year at all? I'm really like, having to to grasp here. Okay, I want to say my father. I got a story for you. So my father surprised me with the 360. I came home okay. and I walked into the room and he was playing. Um, one of the launch games, I, I want to say it was Forza. Forza Motorsport 2 or 3? Okay, 3. Um, I think. That was, the, was that the launch one? Let me get the 360 yeah, launch game. I think it was just I think it was just called Forza 3. Or no, it is maybe Motorsport 3. But, um, but it was launch day or week or whatever. It was over, launch time, I assume. 
Um, go ahead with your story, Alex, because that's really, I mean, that is, that's my story. I walked in, and it wasn't so pompous. I just walked in, my dad mm-hmm. was playing, he was like, look what I got, and I freaked mm-hmm. out, and Mine, we played games together. You, you go. You I go. could not love my grandmother more mm. when she did this. Okay. It, the year is 2007, two years after the 360 released. I didn't own one, but man, I played the hell out of one in my friend's house. We played Guitar Hero. We've played Skate. We've played all this other stuff. We played Halo all the time. But I didn't have my own. 2007 comes around. And I'm at school. Everybody's talking about a certain game that released today. That game is Halo 3. That man, I was so excited for Halo 3. Mm. I was like, uh, I was like, oh, you know, I really, I really hope I can get it soon or whatever. Yeah. My grandma picks me up. I get in the car. Mm-hmm. I see a GameStop bag sitting right here. Just just sit. Now, mind you, my grandma, 60-something-year-old Hispanic woman, knows nothing about the internet, yeah. knows nothing really about anything. All right. Knows that knows I go to a video about games. nothing about anything. Oh, nice. about games. I know. I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. But she, but she someone, knows... someone spit out their coffee listening to that. They're like, holy shit. He just says grandma doesn't know anything. Go ahead. No, my grandma knows a lot. I know. But I she, she knows that every week I ask to go to this video game store, yeah. and she looks around. She has no idea what this is. Yeah. I would see the bag and I was like, what is that? Mm. And she's like, open it. I open it. Legendary edition of Halo 3. Ooh. And I was like, oh. And I was like, wait a minute. Am I, so can you take me over to my friend's house? Because I don't have an Xbox. I, I can't play it. So can we go over there? Can, you, can I go over there after I do my homework or something? And she was like, I'm going to go take you to go get your own Xbox right now. I was like, <gasps> She literally was like, bought the game. She wanted to make sure that the game didn't uh, sell out. Yeah. So she so wanted she to, to buy the me the first. game the first. Yeah. So, yeah. And it surprised me. It's like, hey, we're going to go get you your system Ooh. now. Dude. Oh. Well, I ran it, ran it to a GameStop. Got a pre Was it a GameStop? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, it was a GameStop. Okay. okay. Yeah, it was Didn't a GameStop. Didn't know if it was an EB or Rhinos, all that shit. So. No, I was going to go to an EB, but they were out of um, all of them. Okay. But then the, a GameStop that was the in, near my house, uh, near the, our area, had a pre-owned uh, arcade edition. Mm-hmm. So that was like, I'll take it. Yeah, anything. I literally, I, I walked up in there, got it, composite cables. <laughs> oh, you had to get it. I had to get the composites com- for the jumbos, for the... Uh, yep. Uh, yep. Those oh composite God. cables I don't were, remember what the TVs were called. Uh... Just the you talking about tube TVs, TVs. is what yeah, we yeah. really called them, really. Yeah, but you had the RGB, you know, the regular the regular cords and the components. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So got that hooked it up, and then started Rest up. Is history. Yeah, Rest is history. And all you hear is oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. And played until uh, your eyes bled. Probably. I I literally played that story mode to about five a.m. and I I had to go to to school and wake up at six and I was like, I guess I'm staying up. <laughs> didn't go to yeah, I didn't sleep. I slept when I came back from school that that day, <laughs> the other day. Dude, best day probably of my life. That's that's awesome. Very nostalgic. Very nostalgic. At the time. I loved it. Um at the time. You're like, I got a kid now and whatever. So yeah. that, that's, yeah, that might be my the wife best time. My ass if she heard this. That might be the best time, I guess. <laughs> but the three six <laughs> um, so really quick, let's uh talk those launch titles I wanted to bring up. Mm. Um but, and I I wanna say it wasn't one of these games. I'm going to have to find. I'm pretty sure it was Motorsport 3, but I'm going to check. it's Motorsport 3 because I had a demo disc for that when I got, I got a magazine. And yeah. it brought a demo disc and it had that. I, I think my dad was just looking to play something. So I think he just bought the first thing he saw. Um, okay. But uh, launch titles. Amped 3, Call of Duty 2, Condemned Criminal Origins, another game mm. that we had. Terrifying fucking mm-hmm. game. Terrif- mm-hmm. Terrifying game. FIFA 06, Road to FIFA World Cup. Gun. Very special place yeah, in my heart. I'm going to come that. back to that. Uh, mm-hmm. cameo, uh, cameo, Elements of Power, Madden 06, NBA 2K6, NBA Live 6, Need for Speed Most Wanted, NHL 6, uh, Perfect Dark Zero, Peter Daction's King Kong, the official game of the movie. <laughs> that game was hard, man. <laughs> Project Gotham Racing 3, Quake 4, Ridge Racer 6, oh. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 6, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. Oh, that was a good one. 
And that of course, a good, that's, that's North a good America, title. the best-selling t- the title was Call of Duty 2 with an attach rate of 77%. Mm-hmm. 77% of, was... of systems had a Call of Duty with it. It's fucking crazy. That game came in clutch, dude, for Christmas. It, it everybody, had, everybody had that game. It, it was did. so fun. It did. I, I, I remember watching my father play. I don't believe I played that too much. I, I played it a little, but it, I was really, I was a little too young to really play a lot of stuff by myself. So I was still learning um, third person. Not sorry. That's when I was, I was learning. still learning first person shooters. So I was watching my dad a lot, trying to learn how to play the games. Mm-hmm. See, and I played that, and I, that's when I was learning respawn tactics because any time I died, I'm like, okay, as soon as I spawn, there's going to be a grenade that's literally going to hit here, so I should move over here. And literally, same grenade was there, I moved over there. Like, yeah. it would be the same because they wouldn't change it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, th- and those so are funny. the launch titles. Now, let's there's we're gonna kind of do audibles here alex but i'm gonna gonna be a lot for 360 there's gonna be a lot this is gonna be almost probably the majority of the show next to the xbox one section but yeah i got timestamps because this is gonna be a lot this is gonna be a lot lot. so i want to really quick back to because we're we're gonna talk launch titles i don't know if there's a specific Mm. one you want to point out there but gun was a pivotal game for myself specifically Mm. because it opened up what a game means and what it can be for me games were uh point a point b okay you have an objective you go there and then you come back and then you beat the level there was always a specific thing to do and then gun comes gun comes out it is an open world. If you've never played the game, um, if you ever played Red Dead, it's Red Dead. There. You now know what mm-hmm. Gun is. <laughs> I mean, it's almost mm-hmm. the exact same game. But Gun, although, of course, does have quest objectives and things like that, you could get in a horse and just go. There was a place called Dodge City. That was, like, the kind of main city, and then you went to other places. But, like, I really believe Gun... If given a bigger window to shine, would still be with us today. And it was underrated. It was around the time where people, it, it didn't come out at a perfect time because first off, you, you heard me read off the, all of those launch games. There wasn't enough to breathe between all the sports games, with, between Call of Duty, between all that other stuff, it just didn't have enough time. And Gun has a special place in my heart because not only did it show me that games can take you in a completely separate direction, you can have an open playground where you get a horse, you mm. go, you maybe find this service where there's this mini game where it's called the Pony Service, and you get, you know, you go and deliver a piece of mail over there, and you have this like crazy story of like vengeance and 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 this like cool side. It was it was mature. You, I was a child, so I felt cool. Re- I was playing it. Are you surprised that they haven't remastered the game? Uh, so no, because I want to say the majority of people who made this are gone. Mm, um, so gotcha. I don't know where I don't know where this IP is. So I hmm. know. Hold on, let's look here. I, uh, so, Acti- so Activision published the game. Um, mm-hmm. Developers were never soft. Beanox was who ported to PC, and then Rebellion Developments apparently put it on PSP, which I did not know this was on PSP. So apparently it was ported. So mm-hmm. Neversoft um, most likely um, uh, did not retain the IP. I would assume it's with Activision. That means it's fucking dead. <laughs> we're never seeing this game again. Activision doesn't care. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this was a big deal for me. I loved this game. Mm-hmm. Loved it so much. It it was. I don't know. It's not really meant. I, it's not. I wouldn't say it's ahead of its time, but it it was something. Yeah, this game was like you said. It was Red Dead before Red Dead. Yeah, yeah. And even though um, I want to say Red Dead Revolver was already already had come out. It wasn't. It was different. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't no, know for sure. I don't know, Alex. Was there anything hmm. from that launch window that you saw that really spoke to you? Um. I think because uh, Forza wasn't my very or Need for or I guess Need for Speed was my very first racing game, but like, right. like Ridge Racer, oh, I, I I did Ridge Racer a lot when I was little, for some reason, and because uh, PlayStation, you know, had uh, Gran Turismo, mm-hmm. and then Xbox had um, Ridge Racer and things like that. 
Um, but the Tony Hawk American Wasteland, I, I I always played all the Tony Hawk games, so I played that one a lot too. Um, most of those games, I mean, I played not all of them, but I did play some of them. But they're mm. all equally. I I mean, I played them equally. Uh, Halo is probably what I played the most. Yeah, I mean, I didn't play much of these games. If I'm being completely honest, I just wanted to see yeah. if you had any affinity with yeah. any of those games, and I I definitely do not now. Moving from um, this, we start really getting to know Xbox Live as a service. I feel mm. like, with, especially with 360, it it comes in. You kind of have the service where you know you can play online now with your friends with the Call of Duties, um, mm. and we are really about to hit blast off in about a year or two. Uh, in this kind of timeline that we're going on, and why are we about to hit blast off? Because we're spot- we're about to be in a year where we get Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Halo Three. We're about to get Bioshock. We're about to. I mean, it really kind of it's like a powder keg, and it and you blow it up inside of the powder keg. Like it, it's something that goes completely insane so fast. And um, really want to know, Alex, what are your thoughts on all? This? Trying I mean, to get you the actual timeline for all these games. Because it's gotcha. so much. I mean, <clears throat> during the right around that time, like even before I got Halo Three, my, I played my very first Elder Scrolls game was in two thousand six. Was Oblivion? Oblivion. I love that game to death. That was mm. my very first Elder Scrolls game. I, I got all the achievements for it. I did everything. Man, Shilgareth is my man. <laughs> <laughs> I never played uh, Oblivion. Now that is that. Would you say that was your first game that you kind of other than Halo Three? I guess. Um, yes, is that the first that was, game that you kind of like? Hey, this is pulling um, you into being like, oh, this is my. System. That was my first RPG. Okay, Oblivion was my it was my very first RPG yeah. game. And mind you, like I, I used to tell you, I wasn't really into RPGs. You did, but you for did. some reason, Oblivion was just like that's that was that was my shit, man. Mm-hmm. I love that game because at the time I, uh, I played that. I mean, I played. It gets, we had a lot of Guitar Heroes because they had. That, I had that on PS2 and then 360. I played. That's really all I used to play back then. When I didn't have my own system, was I run over to somebody's house, play Guitar Hero. That's all I played until Halo Three. Um, but uh, the skate games that was fun. Okay, I actually got what I was looking for. Okay, um, I wanted to find exactly where achievements come into play. Hmm. And I want to say the first the achievements really started getting the gamer score system was introduced in 2005 at E3, mm-hmm. but they started rolling it out in 2007. Yes, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, because Halo had achievements yeah. and so did uh, Call of Duty Four Black. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 2007 and in, and it gave you achievements in like Halo Two. It looks like with the Windows Live. Games for Windows yes, Live. Yes, yes, yeah, Windows like, Live so, thing, yeah. Yep. So yes, this is where I wanted to kind of divulge, because that's kind of the next big step we have. Right before this crescendo yes. of of video games that are about to come, in about, mm-hmm. I would say, 2007, is really when it starts going. 2006, mm-hmm. 2007, 2008 window. We get ach- the achievement system, which... La- for, excuse the um, terrible pun. Changes the game. With <laughs> it, it, there is now a game within games. Now it is, mm-hmm. it has now gotten meta. We've broken the fourth wall. There are now achievements that give you things for playing the game mm-hmm. that are outside the game. You're getting this kind of gamer score thing that they call it now. There's, there's things that are popping that give you a point. Now you have totals. Now you can compare it with friends. And this whole new dimension has now been opened. And Alex, gamer score. That is just something that has transformed the way I play games mm-hmm. forever, for the rest of my life. Oh, for sure. I'm always going to care I mean, about achievements to some remember, extent. Do you remember your first thousand? It was, um, so thousand as in get all the achievements, because in the yes. Xbox community, it's a, a thousand means you got all the achievements, not necessarily you got a thousand gamer scores. So which one would you like to know? You got... At that time, most of the games had a th- had a thousand. No, arcade titles did not. Remember that two hundred. Uh, then they got. Okay. Then they were able to get to six hundred. Okay. 
the four, the so, the thou, the thousand a hundred percent. So the so it had to have a thousand gamer score. Yes, a thousand. So yes. that Your first thousand. That would have been Bioshock. Okay. That that doesn't feel right. Can you uh, come back to me? But it it was around that that time. Okay. But well, mine, you, you mine know, was I know Don- you know yours. Mine was Dante's Inferno. Oh, that might have been mine too. My first thousand was Dante's Inferno. Okay. Okay. And I love that fucking game. That was game, a great man. game. Great game. Dude, Good achievement uh, list. It wasn't a bad achievement list. Didn't you have great to be on the hard? List. I think so. I think God, you it's did. Been so many, it's been so many years. It's been but a yeah, long time. I, it's been a long time. Yeah, I, it's such a great game. I mean, I, collecting all the all the souls, you know, all the people. Like, oh, it was the, the combat. The judgment system. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. You were able to judge people, like, if you wanted to like, mm-hmm. kill them or not? Yeah, that's where you had to find Sorry, everybody. Sorry, not kill judgment. them. You got to say, like, am I going to remove you from heaven or am I going to send oh, you, you resolved, deeper into pretty hell? Much. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Oh, yeah, I wish they would remaster that game, dude. But I think that was by Visceral. If I'm, Is- I don't, I don't remember. Now maybe I'm thinking of Dead Space. Let me see. Visceral definitely made Dead Space. Dante's Inferno. You're gonna have to put game. I fucked up. I f- don't know why. I, I just put that. I think it's the- really stay for game. Let's see. It's 2010. Publishers EA Visceral. No, okay. you nailed it. Oh, Good dang. job, Alex. Got Good it. job. Yeah, Visceral Games did make Dante's Inferno, published by EA. So EA, mm. cough it up. Ugh. Cough it up, EA. Bring it oh, out. Bring Look. it back. It was twenty. It was twenty ten. Oh I mean, it was a little while. Alex, my first mm. one thousand achievements. Mm. Hmm. You'll never guess guess this. Monkey Allen. WWE Legends. Oh, so they I remember they brought this out. I loved this game. And the mm. reason I did was because it was like there was like cool storylines you can do. Mm-hmm. But also right when I finished the kind of stories that they did, that, which was really is that cool. The gold one, the one with the gold yep. cover. Legends of WrestleMania okay. was, but it was yeah. called WWE yep. Legends, but it called it, yep. it, it, Legends of WrestleMania was on it. And you got to I relive like one. these ancient uh, matches. Not only were I you watched able you to play, I didn't play myself. Yes, you watched me play a lot of it. I remember that. Yeah. Um, but it was a, I mean, it was a pretty easy thousand. I remember the hardest yeah. one I had to do was technician. Um, it is win by using five or more reversals in a single match. Now, mind you, this was in 2009. So I was still kind of new to games. I wasn't mm-hmm. as quick. I wasn't able to really mm-hmm. kind of, you know, I didn't have the fast movements yet. I yeah. was still really getting used to games. But that was my, I remember being... I remember being so happy when I finally got like the fifth reversal. Like, oh, I finally did it! Oh my god, I'm done, mm-hmm. and I got to win the match. But um, uh, I, I remember that feeling with one other than the Miles High Club achievement. You remember that? So that actually might be and achiever. Oh, we're skipping so much ahead, but I, I love the conversation, so I'm not going to stop it. So achievers, I don't know if you remember this, um, the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Not only had a di- pretty difficult achievement in beating the game in veteran, that's not like playing veteran in the Call of Duties that come out within these last few years. They have mm-hmm. toned down how hard veteran is by a lot. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe me, go play War to War with veteran and then come back to oh. me when you're fucking crying after 70 hours of being grenaded for 30 for like most of it. Cause, and cause remember, imagine at the time, I mean, that's it. Call, of Duty, Call of Duty Mode 4 Modern Warfare was 2007. So, yeah. like, I almost had the 1,000, but Miles High Club achievement was what I was missing. I didn't get that till a couple years later to finish it. So, that was, that was my biggest, like, mm, man. Yep. Yep. That's why I couldn't get it. That, that one would have been my first 1,000, but I couldn't get that Miles High. How you doing that? Oh, to the, oh, man. Mm, I was so <laughs> mad. <laughs> now, Still to this day. Oh my god, Alex! I, I I I don't know if you did this when you were researching for this. There's so many games where I'm like, why didn't I thousand that? I have like two achievements yep. left. Yes, so exactly. Uh, case in point. Oh, I'm missing one achievement or two achievements on that. Case in point, Alex. I am at 900 gamer score for Lost via Damos <laughs> or Damus, whatever. I'm like, why didn't I just go for that last achievement? Those had like really easy achievements. 990 yeah. for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Like why do I yep. why, why do I not, why do I have the Alan Wake like just a bunch of games 
Um, I just don't have a thousand. I don't know why. Um, Stand back to it. I completely look at that. Nine hundred and twenty for Halo Three ODST. So much like why did I not do the rest? <laughs> okay, here we go. I was looking for Modern Warfare. Let's see, Mile High Club. Um, November sixth, two thousand nine. So when I did the Mile High Club, might be one of the hardest things I have done as as a person who plays video games. Might be one of the mm-hmm. hardest things I've ever done. My Hug Club is a ridiculous, ha- ridiculously hard thing. And we didn't have to do it once. We had to do it a second time. Yeah, we did with the new one. Yes, we did. And we did mm-hmm. it. Now, yeah, Achievers, did. I don't know if you guys got to this, but if you played Call of Duty Modern Warfare, of course, you beat the game. If you're going for the achievements, you'd be an veteran or whatever. Then there's a secret mission that they don't tell you about. You just go and do it called Mile High Club. Say mm-hmm. you basically are rescuing a president on Air Force One. Um, and like these terrorists have taken over you and you have a time limit. You have 31 seconds. I want to say, I want to say it's like 30 something seconds. 31. So, yeah, you can check if you like, but yeah, you have like 30 seconds to fully clear out a plane and get to the president, do a kind of like slow-mo shoot bad guy in the head thing, save the president, jump out the plane, boom, you win. Now do this on veteran. Now do this when you don't, you literally don't have enough time to kill everybody. So you're kind of just flashbanging, running by them, very quickly going to the next room, flashbanging them, trying not to get flashbang yourself so you can still run, run by them, kill who you need to. It, it, it was fucking, it was, it was hard. You, so you have one minute on a veteran because it varies between. That's right. It varies between things. So it's three minutes on a recruit. Two minutes on regular, one minute and 45 on Harden, and just one minute on veteran. Sorry, Achievers. We're off because it doesn't feel like a minute because it goes, uh, it goes, uh, it goes like that. And I think, well, I think that's to, to complete it. I don't know if it's to get the achievement. To get the achievement, I think, I think it's even lower. Let me see if it'll tell me. No, no. The, the achievement is to complete the Mile High Club on veteran. So okay. you play it on veteran. You have a minute. And you have to go through it. Okay, maybe that's that was a hard achievement. That was a hard achievement. Yeah, it was. Ugh. Anyways, oh, yeah, that, that that was hard. Yeah. Anyways, it, Alex, it's bringing me in so many like rage quits. Yeah, that was, that was. I mean, that was fucking. That was, that was the game. Uh, we're kind of in the free form discussion, Alex. We let's let's talk about these games like what are some hey what are some 360 games that you feel like are that you really appointed to the system in uh not to brag but i got a thousand five hundred and five gamer score in halo 3 not to brag though almost all, almost all of them almost all mm-hmm. out of the possible 1750 yeah pretty good pretty good um like I said, I mean, the biggest games, because that's all I played before, was the Guitar Heroes. I, I bought every single you one. You were in love with Guitar them. I, st- oh, he's got it. He's got it. Still yeah, he's it. got it. Still has it. He's still got it. Alex, play us a tune. Play us a tune. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> uh, no. Cheevers, he, he won't tell uh. you this, but he could, and you might have to help me with which one this was. But he could put something on expert. He could then through the fire and flames. He could then he could then turn around. Oh, oh sweet child of mine! Look at the screen and play the game. I'm not. I'm not like. Haha, he's. You know. He could. He can. You know. He's peeking. No. He would look at you in the eye, not look at the screen, and do it. Yeah. One it, of the most it, impressive things I ever seen in my entire life when he did that. I was like, yeah, was, how is this real? <laughs> and it's crazy because if you look online. People do through the fire and flames without looking now, and it's that is ridiculous. Uh, superhuman. Yeah, exactly. Superhuman. But that uh, the big game that really because I was a big skater. Yes. The the, the first the first skate. Yeah. The yep. first skate was probably not uh, not the favorite game, but probably top three of my favorite games of three sixty of all time. Really. Mm-hmm. Oh, just bold, but I love it. So skate one, not three. Yeah, skate one just because the ori- it's the original. Yeah, and that f- oh that fucking skate match. Yeah, that had oh yeah. that one that always used to get me because he used to do a three sixty hard flip and I can mm. never figure out how to do that with my thumb. I figured it out. 
I remember the I day you came back it. and you're like, I did it. And I was like, what? He's like, I, f- I know how to do it. I and think it, I was supposed to fight Rodney Rodney Mullins, I think, because he's part of he's probably my one of my favorite skaters. But yeah. oh, oh man, that was so hard, and I was used to get so mad because I'd get him at I would get him at scat, and then he would just dominate me for the rest. And I'm like, man, come on. I remember you would get to T, you get him to T, or sorry, you get him to E. Like you, you, he'd be at I'm E, not too. yeah, and then he would just he'd do it over he'd three sixty uh, hard flip or whatever you call it and mm-hmm. to kill yep. you, kill yep. you. But oh, yeah, the first the first skate man was there's nothing else like it. Like man, that was so fun. It was the unique music was at that awesome. time. There wasn't a skate game, and if there was, there it was. It, uh, and I know everyone's screaming Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk. It did not it's capture. Not it did not capture culture like like skate did. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, not skate, the same. Like Tony Hawk was fun. Like we had proven ground. We had it was arcadey. It was arcadey. It, was it wasn't bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying. I'm not this saying Tony Hawk doesn't have a spot sim. at the table, mm-hmm. but skate had the th- skate had the thing Tony Hawk was missing. It was it was a skate sim. Yes, like I mean, yeah, like literally your your thumbstick is the board, and yeah. you had to move it the way it yeah. was. And oh, dude, the amount it was of punishing, time, the like amount it had the right of amount hours, of punishing, the amount of hours I would just go down a hill and just manual and see how far I could yes. go, and I'm like, and I, then I'll be j- jumping. I'm like, come on, get further. I've been sitting there for hours. Oh, yep. such amazing game. Yep. And they're coming back with a new one. Man, I'm so yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In seven, four, five, in eight years, I can't wait to play it. They'll never hey, launch that thing. It's okay. Jesus Christ. It's okay. Hurry I'll up. Wait. Get it together. A lot of special, music licenses. A lot of special mm-hmm. games. Um, since we're kind of on the achievement train, um, let's not forget mm-hmm. uneven achievements. Get May out. they all burn in hell. May they all burn the in first... hell. One of my first, not one of my first, <clears throat> the first uneven game I ever got was called Wolf of the Battlefield Commando 3. It was an arcade game. For some reason, my dad got bought it, and I played it, and one of the achievements is called One Man Army 7 Gamer Score. You kill 200 enemies. <sighs> that happened to me with Dead Island. Not a fan. I love that game to death, but I never knew that it had uneven achievements. And when I got the first uneven achievement, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Well, you didn't <laughs> notice that you cared until it happened. Until it then happened, you realized yeah. you're at two, and it's fucking terrible. When you it just look, looks bad. And, it, and when you look and you see the number two, you want to hang yourself. <laughs> No, I hate. Look, I hate when people are like, "Oh, that's n- that's not uneven." Like you know, two, you know four, what we mean. I, you know what fives we mean. Five zero. You that's know what we, what we mean. You it smart evens ass. Out. Right. You smart ass. An I, even amount in the terms of gamer score. They're yes. always a zero and a five. Always. 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 And it's very important. Nothing, if you don't have a zero or five, get out. He said, "Get out." <laughs> And then, really, we get to a lot of important games that I find myself, similarly to with Gun, transform what I find in video games. I want to bring up Bioshock. Bioshock, to me, is that seen... Game was yeah, you were very scared of that game. <laughs> Bioshock, to me, I feel like, and Alex, correct me if I'm wrong here, is a 360 game. I think when people think about Bioshock, I feel like they attribute it to the Xbox. Yeah. I think... I think yeah. It is a Xbox kind of feeling game where, of course, this might feel strange to people who aren't in our ecosystem a lot or kind of knew this thing where it's like, what does he mean? It's on both systems. What does it mean? It's an Xbox game. It just you, feels right. It, on fe- Xbox. it feels right. The marketing kind of made it seem like it was more of an Xbox game. The closest thing I can kind of attribute to it was. Um, I'm trying to find a really good example of this where it's like that's it's on both but it's a PlayStation game you know like I, Final Fantasy like it, it's different now but when Final Fantasy um 12 came just, out K- Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts just say Kingdom Hearts I mean Kingdom Hearts was yeah, always a PlayStation game true. and it's not it's on Xbox well it, well I think Final Fantasy is almost a better example although it started on okay. Nintendo it's a little more but I feel mm-hmm. like that's even a more yeah. better example because everyone was having that conversation when 12 was coming out 
when tw- mm-hmm. or sorry, uh, thirteen. Um, when thirteen was coming yeah, 13, out, yeah, there were, I remember there were articles saying, "Play it on your PlayStation." Like, literally, I'm not kidding. Go back, Google it now. You'll find it. There were articles that said, "But play it on your PlayStation." Like, don't, like Final Fantasy is meant to. It was like opinion pieces or whatever. That is a great example of. It's on Xbox, but it doesn't feel legacy mm-hmm. it doesn't feel right if you've been playing it on the other system for so long yeah case in point the feeling we got with bioshock bioshock to me i i i, I tell me if achievers if you disagree that's a 360 game and that's something i attribute very much to 360 the way the achievements are i don't know it's, it's every the whole experience just really blends well the green of the achievement with like the kind of drewy atmosphere you find yourself in mm-hmm. i very much love bioshock and that's another thing like gun in the other direction, where it showed me, we're really going to paint a story. We're going to show you this underwater mm-hmm. city that this guy kind of said, you know what? The governments are terrible. None of it works. I'm going to go make my own place, and we're going to live in this liberal paradise where like, it's like laissez-faire. You do whatever you want. Like, you make your own thing, who cares, you know, study now, children, you know, make mutations, have gene editing stuff, and then everything goes to shit. Go ahead. You're not wrong on a feeling of Xbox game, because it was an exclusive to Xbox. It was. For a, for for a year. A year, yeah. I think it was a year, right? 2007, it came to Windows and 360, and then a PS3 port came out a year 2008, later. yeah. So, it is an Xbox game. S- another case in point. Mass Effect. Mass Effect was an exclusive mm-hmm. Xbox game. That didn't come... That was, that's a completely different story. That didn't come till fucking <laughs> seven years later or something like that to PS3. And finally, mm. in the N7 collection, you could finally buy all three games together. If I remember correctly, the only way you could have had your choices in Mass Effect 2 is when they released... Um, oh, what was it called, Alex? The Mass Effect... Oh, you're talking about Legend? that thing that they did? Yeah, yeah it was a comic. That, that you, yeah, it's like what Dragon Age did, too. You could pick yeah. your decisions and it you ports it decisions. over. Yeah, you had to buy it. It was like $4. Oh, yeah, I remember. It's not important, but that's, I mean, they had to port a mini game thing, mm-hmm. comic, choice calculator, so you could transfer it to Mass Effect 2, so you felt like you had some sort of choice system in it. Mm. But but yeah, that that is my example. And and thank you, Alex, for reminding me. I actually forgot Bioshock was exclusive for a year. That is an mm-hmm. important point. And g- kudos to whoever the fuck was able to score that. It was worth mm-hmm. whatever you paid because mm-hmm. Bioshock, you had Bioshock yeah. for a year. Which yep. oof, whatever you paid, <laughs> it you got it for a steal. Whatever it yeah. was, you got it for a steal. I would have paid more. Made sure it was exclusive. Anyways. Um, yeah, very important game to me, Bioshock 1, showing you not only can we have a fantastic plasmid system where you have this kind of secondary, like, for lack of a better word, magical system where you can shoot lightning out of hands, you can cause bees to erupt from your hands and shoot at people, and that was a big deal back then. You were uh, able, the animations you were, that you had on your hands. The animations were huge. I remember seeing them and being like, holy God, this looks real. Mm-hmm. Like that is, I think that is probably one of the old. If, if we're not including like pixel art games, that might be the best. That that might be one of the games where it's just going to hold up forever, because mm-hmm. it has the art style of like it. It's it has like a classic art style where it doesn't seem like it it'll age. It's not trying too hard to be real, mm-hmm. and it has just enough technology to. To, to you can it's a face yeah. but it's not like trying too hard we're in a few years we're gonna be like oh remember when we used to do that yeah that looks bad now or whatever and and a lot of it honestly is hidden um a lot of the, um, the actual characters like the, the npcs and stuff is hidden um for instance when you wake up from the bed um f- uh when the little girls save you little sister save you the the doctor is silhouetted behind light. You can't really see her face. So there's a lot of uh, cool camera tricks with that. I don't want to uh, turn this into a Bioshock love fest because I will just talk mm-hmm. about Bioshock forever. So I'm going to cut myself off. But that is a 
that is something that I have a lot of memories, fantastic memories of playing with the 360, especially experiencing that with my father. It's very special to me. We talked about shooters and, you know, yeah. um, racing, racing game, RPG games. What yeah. was your first horror game? Uh, Condemned Criminal Origins. My dad bought okay. that. I watched him play it. Fucking terrifying. I play, I tried play. I couldn't play it. Mm-hmm. I was too scared. Um, again, uh, that, that, that was too... When did I play this? I, I have it like down here. I'll say mm. 2009. I, I think okay. that's when we got it. So 2009. Might be mm-hmm. a little earlier. Yeah. I, I, could, I couldn't play it though. It's fear. Oh, yeah. 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 I experienced fear through you. You showed me fear. Mm. And uh, I'll, I'll get to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get, you know exactly what I'm going to say. I'll get to that scene. Um, oh, God. Uh, but really quick, con- con- uh, Condemned was uh, so scary. I didn't want to watch it. It was yeah. too scary. But. I remember uh, experiencing fear with you, mm. uh, and I'll never forget. This is a special moment <laughs> that we'll always have when you go down the ladder and you turn around, and the little girl standing right there. Biggest oh. scare I've ever had. It, <laughs> like that was just unexpected, just so unexpected oh, in the game. It was that, as soon and it was as the you same. turn, you just she's just standing there, and you're like, oh, and you're like, like, get down the ladder. <laughs> yep, and then as soon as you're just going down the gutter, and then you, she just starts crawling at you out of the darkness. Oh, fear one, man. I give props to how scary they shake me. It they, was they very get. scary. Very scary. And then we do see an awakening in the arcade titles, Alex. Mm-hmm. Um, around this time window is what we're talking. We're kind of being a little liberal with what we're talking about with timelines here, but we do start experiencing arcade games. And Alex, we start getting the term downloadable game. Mm hmm. What are these games? Oh, oh, it's a downloadable game. We start hearing things like, oh, the, you know, this is good for a downloadable game. Remember that? That's mm-hmm. how we used to describe every download. Oh, it's good. Remember Limbo? That was kind of the first one that was like, oh, this is a really good downloadable game. But, like, you know, like we always had to classify. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. good for a downloadable game because it was always cheaper. You know, you kind of felt like it didn't get as much of the value. Although, in hindsight, it was probably much more valuable than a lot of the games we were playing back then especially in case of limbo fantastic mm. game that yes is severely unrated where is there any off top of the head alex um hmm. you download from that arcade list the xbox live arcade system summer of arcade titles i mean anything really oh and my god they should really bring that remember. system back by the way summer of arcade why if what mm-hmm. why for whatever reason they stopped doing that who, silly decision bring back summer of arcade bring it back stop it with all this bring summer of arcade back but is there an arcade game on the 360 that you really did drive with back then um it was a digital game and it was i, I don't remember if it was a pre to play game but it was Gotham City Imposters. <laughs> I don't okay. know why, but I love that game. Okay. I enjoyed that, you know, I had this base thing off of, you know, Batman and Joker and all that stuff. And you can create your character off of them. And that was like a really fun, like, like just a fun arena shooter. Yeah. And it was just like, because I was never really into arcadey games. Because, I mean, you were into them. Like, you know, you loved your Mikey yeah. Island I did. and all that I stuff. Did. Yeah, but I never really got into them. The the closest arcadey game that I can even think of was more of a tycoon game was Thrillville. I love Thrillville, but I never played it, played much of the arcadey stuff. Yes, uh, arcade games. Uh, these are easy questions for me. Some of my favorite games, um, and unfortunately, some of the most underrated games: Penny Arcade Episode One and Two. Um, mm-hmm. Episode One. Um, I'm blanking on the names right now, achievers. So apologies, but uh, Episode Two was the. Uh, pers- the Precipital of Darkness or something like that. Um, incredible. Incredible mm. games. Yeah. yeah. Penny Arcade Episode 2. Um, you remember when things cost Microsoft of darkness. points? Yeah, Microsoft points. Yeah, we didn't touch on that. But yeah, Microsoft points, for whatever reason, we had to have a confusing point system. And you can just put money on something. You had to like have a point system. I think that was a way of... It might have been a way of tricking parents into mm-hmm. not understanding how much they're actually buying maybe i don't know but i don't know why that ever existed would you count this as an arcade game or a full game sonic adventure 2 uh that was technically a remaster right like a re-release no because no? the, the, the no because the game came out on 360 okay uh, 
But, yeah, it was a, it, yeah, it was a oh, full I, release, it, though, right? Because I, 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 I remember it was on GameCube. So yeah, so I didn't know if it was considered an arcade it, game. An, an like easy that. way to know if it was an arcade game back then, the achievements are capped at 200. It, it, it was... Okay, it was technically a remake because there was a, oh, the original was, in, say, oh, it was on I the Dreamcast. So. Yeah, I thought so. I was like, that's technically a re-release, remake, I whatever guess, you want to yeah. call that. So I definitely wouldn't uh, consider that. But I remember, again, remember, um, game, Gamer Score was capped at 200. So mm-hmm. that's an easy way of, uh, of finding out. That's, that's, and I have a true. lot of arcade games that I loved. Again, Limbo, Burnout Crash. I don't know, Alex, I think I had you play that. Mm-hmm. If you remember that, that was the game where you literally started on a hill and you try to see how mm-hmm. much damage you could you could do. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. But really, Penny Arcade Episode 1 and 2, those are fantastic arcade games. I don't think you can get them anymore. If you can, though, and you have a 360, go download those. Those are underrated, hilarious video games that I wish someone would do something with. I miss Penny Arcade Episode 1 and 2. Of course, Penny Castle Arcade... Castle Crashers was an amazing game. Castle Crashers was one of the first, if not the first, uh, Xbox Live arcade game that was actually like very popular. Castle Crash is huge. Um, I love that game. It was a huge release. And I'm going to do the thing, especially for a downloadable game. But, but anyway, um, yeah, that was a fantastic, fantastic uh, game in Castle Crashers. Me and my dad played that a bunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can go all day with this, Alex. I mean, oh, we could. And yeah, if you have any arcade games, Doritos I mean, Crash Course. Uh, Remember that? I do. I do. Doritos Crash Course. Yes, I do. That was. I don't know why I played that so much, but I did. Did same. I did. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, going through the game score, it's some fantastic games like Spec Ops: The Line, The Darkness. Dead, stop me if you you want to talk about any of these. Dead Space Three, Fear yep. Two, Portal Two. Oh, such a Portal good game. Portal Two, very in, a very special game. Portal Two. By the way, Sonic Adventure Two was an arcade game. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I, 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 yeah, I popped up and it says an arcade game, so I it was bothering me because I was like, was it a full game? Could remember. I feel like that is cheating because it is a re-release, but I will allow it. Mm. Uh, okay. Lego Harry Potter. And the, the, my first introduction into the Lego games. Call of War is, uh, both one and Bound in Blood were good games. Tomb Raider, the remake. This is when we're starting to get a little bit older. Uh, Are these Mon- still arcade games we're talking about? No, no, no. no, no I, I okay, say, I was about to say. No, no, I'm just going over like important games Older from 360 games. to me. Attic, 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 to attic, me, attic. yeah, yeah, yeah. Crackdown 2. For some reason, I have a 1,000 gamer score in. I don't know why I played that much of that game. That wasn't a good game Easy at all, game. but I played a lot of it. Ah, we enjoyed it at the time. The Darkness 2. Fantastic. God, game. yeah. Fantastic game. Assassin's Creed, That's the original. Game. That's an important game. That mm-hmm. is an oh, important yeah. game right there. Assassin's that is Creed. a revolutionary game. Yes, yes. Spawned, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it spawned a revolution of uh, for Ubisoft with one... Mm-hmm. And then two, Assassin's Creed two, an even bigger deal. I would, I which, would um, argue, um, which is crazy because these games became instead of more, less RPG. Okay, they're more <laughs> RPG, but they're also historical in a sense. Like they help, they do teach you at the same time because uh, you know. I'm gonna uh, very like, quickly. I know what you like, mean, but yeah, yeah. The, the more you know, this is kind of like an action game, not really RPG. I would say, but yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. You definitely. It definitely was a history. It was kind of the first time you really saw like this kind of blending of like history, but like alternate history type storytelling in vi- in the video game space. Of course, you had movies and things mm-hmm. like that, but mm-hmm. in the video game space, there wasn't really too much that was not only combining the history take on things where it is telling you actual events. And um, one really cool detail I loved about Assassin's Creed that they eventually gave up on was um no one died um the way no one ever uh, how do i uh, say this the way someone died in assassin's creed was always the same year and the same way they died i believe historically so for instance um just as an example cleopatra was killed by a snake bite there is a in lore reason why Cleopatra was killed by a snake. It was this um, it's a very specific assassin was ha- had a mission to kill Cleopatra, so she gave her a snake and got bit by him. You know things like that. Mm. Like if if a, the character was died in a specific way, they were killed in the game that way. That's and cool. they got very loose. You know they got very loose with that very fast. But that was an early rule that I loved that they again eventually gave up on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a very important game to again not only me but to the actual Xbox 
um, ecosystem. Of course, it was on PS3, but mm-hmm. I think seen as a 360. Anyway. Alex, anything else uh, from the 360 era? I'm just scrolling through this achievement list just oh. to kind of reminisce. Battlefield Bank Company was a big deal to me, but I wouldn't say that's a 360 game. This is something I did love. I, I just like the the customization in the dashboard. I love the dashboard. Yeah, let's let's talk about the dashboard for a second. Um, that's actually a good um, segue to that. And achievers, you might be asking yourself, like, why aren't they talking more about Halo? We talk about Halo all of the time, so I'm trying not to make this a Halo cast. I'm trying to make this yeah. an Xbox cast. It's very hard to do that when Halo is such a important role to Xbox. So like their big mascot. I, I really quickly before we get into uh, dashboard, I I would I would be kicking myself after this podcast if I didn't bring this up. Gears of War. Okay. Uh, another incredibly popular and important another important game, although oh, for sure. It didn't. It plugged some holes that Xbox didn't have. It was a third person, very gritty, very, you know, Halo. Not really this kind of mature, kind of gritty, you know. Person. Yeah, like it was. It was a first person shooter. Everyone's in spacesuits. You're fighting these aliens. This is a. We are these giant steroided out bros, and we're gonna go bro it out against these aliens that want to debro us. You know what I mean? Like that. That's kind of like this very macho game where you're gonna go kill all these grubs uh you're Grub, in and a, <laughs> and in a almost mortal combat esque fashion explode their heads in the most oh, gruesome sure. way possible oh and that's right the main oh. weapon you're gonna use is a assault rifle with a chainsaw attached to it mm-hmm. and you're going to use a lancer to cut people in half Brrr, you just cut them in half with that thing and it really i just wanted to bring up gears any specific uh i know any specific relation with you in, in gears that you want to bring up i mean i i just that was one of the games that we we always like with again bringing up halo but we always played together with yes, gears we did because the co-op was just so fun it was but the online man that shit was so hard People it was very so high it, it had a high skill level or sorry it, it had was. a high skill ceiling so it was very hard to get into it because you you, you were fighting very, very good people. I remember my first mm-hmm. time trying, and if, if, I mean, I had no chance. Mm-hmm. People were already really good with them. Um, I don't know what they call it in the Gears community, but uh, I, I, I'm just going to call it like a cover jumping. I don't know. when they Because oh, you, you kind of, in, in Gears, you, you kind of magnetize the cover when you hit it. But, you know, you, you immediately like, whoop, like you're on the cover wall, like yeah. almost like a magnet's on you. And mm-hmm. um, high level gears players are constantly magnetizing to like the walls, and that was something that like as a novice, you're dead if you don't adapt quickly. And that, mm-hmm. that was something yeah, I was like, Nasher to the face. Yeah, Nasher to the face. Okay, Alex, you brought up the dashboards. Mm-hmm. We did skip over one very <laughs> important thing I want to bring up about the Xbox, but we're gonna go to the dashboards first. Okay. We don't really see an incredible dashboard change, really, Alex, until about what? I would say 2011? Was that right? With the big... I mean, you had the blades for a very long time. From the, the system launch to about... Yeah, but yeah, I would say about 2011 is when we get the... Um, slides i guess you call them it's almost yeah, like the tiles. slides tiles yeah you get the the and then you they introduce the avatar system mm-hmm. remember these alex we they still yep. technically exist but they don't um in your xbox right now uh but you get an avatar to use so it's yeah, a, the, in 2000 it was 2008 yeah yeah they introduced avatar yeah the avatar and oh, all it's that 2008 stuff. mm-hmm yeah, two, they changed 2008 with the new Xbox experience, which introduced avatars and nope. completely overhauled the I dashboard. Was, I was wrong. 2008 then. Really? 2008? What am I, why am I thinking of 2003? 2011? Was that the, ne- the, that, that's you the know next what? That's one? That's the next one. I'm getting my updates mixed up. Thank you, There's Alex. There's a bunch of updates. Thank you, Alex. Yes, there are a bunch of updates for the 360. Uh, Microsoft, very known, especially in Xbox, very known for updating maybe a little too much to the dashboards. But we'll mm-hmm. get into that later. Alex, please let me know about this uh, this uh, Avatar store. So you said 2008, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, let me... let me. What When you first... I remember when I started hearing about the new Xbox experience. 
and then hearing mm-hmm. like you're gonna get avatars and I, I remember looking so much forward to it and stuff what, what was uh what was your first thought i mean i i the thought of me being able to create a little person like oh, i mean you, you know we've done that with the with the nintendo wii but like you know this is xbox this is our system yeah. you know like being able to do that and then my favorite part of all those dashboards is the 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 tile slide one where each person can have their own theme for their avatar. So for example, I had the Dante's Inferno one yeah. because I was able to get it and it customizes your background uh to like the like the goriness or whatever you can have or like you know they comes with presets that has like the street one for the Xbox street one like it, there's so many cool um I think there was I could I don't remember if there was a Bioshock one, but like there was or call there was a Call of Duty one. But there was so many different themes people could put on. It was just so cool because it was just so customizable and it shows people's um uh likes and stuff like you know, everybody yeah. has their own taste. Mm-hmm. It was just so cool. Yeah. And then and then this is when they're starting to really kind of Microsoft things up, I will say. I remember when mm-hmm. they added Bing to this. There was a whole section of Bing. Remember that? You just scroll to the left oh, and you could yeah. just Bing something. It's like, what? Mm-hmm. They're really trying hard with that. Um, you could search. De- I remember you could search de- like demos, movie. This is really when they're doubling down. Like you can rent movies here. You can mm-hmm. uh, buy music. You can watch music videos. They're really trying to use this as almost like an entertainment system center that we might see more of in the next system uh mm-hmm. after the 360 uh and we maybe see are seeing kind of tells that they are going to start focusing more on that but we had yeah that we had the tile system of course uh to paint a picture in the achievers list, just to remind you if you remember top left you had the game underneath you had a pin system where you can pin things this this was your pins um underneath that you had your recents then right smack in the middle you had a giant ad <laughs> if i remember correctly and then you had more ads and then in the bottom right corner you had ads and then on the right side you had ads so it was almost <laughs> always ads and lest we forget alex if you had a connect connected you saw your little dumb face in the connect camera in the bottom right corner. Yep. Oh my god, achievers! Oh, he just slapped me in the face with some nostalgic right there. I completely forgot. If you had the connect, you could mm-hmm. raise I, your hand. I, I did that. I did it too. We all did it. We all did it for the first three seconds, and then you realize the controller is a much better way of doing this interface. But yeah, you could swipe your hand left to right as if you're being a jackass. And you can hold your hand, and it holds it. It does a little circle. Goes. Brrr. Oh my god, yep. so stupid, so stupid! But we did it because it felt yep. so cool when you did it. When it actually one of the worked. best games I ever played on Connect was Connect Adventures, and I'm like over here doing this and moving around. Not saying a lot, Cheevers. Not saying a lot. He's saying the best game he played on Connect. It's not saying a lot. <laughs> it doesn't have much to go against that and like one other game. <laughs> But yeah, it had the Bing, it had the home feature, it had the social tab, which you saw everyone else's avatars dancing around. If they, you know, I, I had the uh, for a long time um, Star Wars: The Force Unleashed uh, dark Sith armor on. It looked very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, had the friends, the activity fee, of course, the avatar store. You could buy things for your avatar and kind of show off how cool you were. Let's not forget the theme system. You could have themes behind your um, dashboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, movies and TVs and apps. Again, this is them really kind of tr- trying to show you, like, hey, you can buy things on this. You can give us money. Give us money. You can give us a lot of money for this. Mm-hmm. But uh, Alex, really quick, did you mind? Uh, this was a big deal when they up- gave us the next. Um, again, they called it the uh, the new dashboard experience, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, did it bother you that? I mean, this is kind of the first time we see direct advertisement on a system. This was a big deal back then. Um, and it also would become a bigger deal when the Xbox One launches, um, but we won't get to that quite yet. Let's let's talk about the 360. Is that a big deal to you? And again, uh, let's have yeah. some context. We were both teenagers. We did not have the discerning eye we do now. Looking back on it, um, I will have different thoughts than what I did at the time. But again, what yeah. did you? What do? You, what does Alex now? And what did Alex then think? Now, I mean, yeah, they could have very done less. Like, I mean. I didn't. I don't care for half the stuff on the there, ads. There's right. There's right and wrong ways to do ads. Yeah, exactly. But like at then, I didn't even notice it. At the time, probably I did look at the ad. I'm like, oh, cool. That's out. Cool. <laughs> I honestly probably used the ad, but I never clicked on it. 
But now, um, I don't even want it. When the ad said free avatar item, your boy was there. Oh, for your sure. Your boy was there. When it said, uh, I think there was a time that they gave I you a Doritos do bag or, or something if you did something for your mm-hmm. avatar, some shit. I think I, I got mean, a car once with my little person could drive a car at right? you. Whenever they were giving something away to look at some ad, you, I was always in there. Now, I mean, now, who says we're not still doing that with, you know, the Game Pass perks? Oh, get this free charm on Apex. Click. Yes, I still do that. It's a little different, but yes, I see what you mean. Um, uh, going back to what I was saying. Um, no, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, speaking uh, of the ads... With the hindsight I have now, and um, maybe with not so rose colored glasses on, I. You have to be very careful when you advertise things. Because if it's too advert, it's taking you out of the experience of you kind of enjoying your system. Uh, sometimes they had very distracting ads. If you're going to put ads there, at least make them relevant. Advertise a new game coming out. Advertise. Your games, ever you know, make it relevant. When there's Old Spice on my shit every fucking week. When there's, I think, didn't I think like Mercedes Benz? I don't remember. There's some car advertised on it too. I think it was Nissan or something. It was just don't do stuff like that. That's it's in poor taste. You, you look, it, it doesn't look great. I'm sure it gets you a lot of money, but if you're gonna advertise, make things make sense. Advertise PC mm-hmm. stuff. You know, uh, not important. Uh, Alex, it, it looks like you want to interject. Oh no, no, I was I was eating a dirt. I was eating a Pringle. No, I, I thought you said dirt. You were eating dirt. No. Mm. Mm. This is not dirt. These mm. are actually really good. The Moe burgers. Yes, yes they're actually really good. Of course. Uh, and we're skirting. We're we're around the time, so we're. I'm just gonna get to it. The um, slim motto is shown. Uh, around 2009, I believe, uh, released in 2010. Uh, the Slim Auto, beautiful, beautiful system. Got rid of that kind of bulky, not very appealing 360. It really went for a more fas- fa- fashion or fu- function or function over fashion approach with the original arcade model. We went to the black Slim um, edition. And um, Alex, very quickly, I we're gonna. This is gonna be a very long episode. Uh, uh, so I would be remiss not to bring up. I'm sure an, someone will comment this if I didn't bring it up. Before we go into the 360 Slim, we have to talk about maybe the biggest, if not one of the biggest, but most likely the biggest disaster any company has gone through in the terms of the gaming system ever since maybe the video game crashes that we went through. With the NES and uh, Atari timelines around then, <clears throat> and that is the Circle of Death, Alex. You you know what I'm gonna say there? That's the I would tell you. That's why they make came out with the Slim. Yeah, they wanted to get back to the wheel with that one, and I want to be very clear about this. Again, younger achievers, we're still pretty young, but we we were there around the time. If this were to happen to any other company, there we still don't know how much this actually cost Microsoft. Um, the rumor is it uh, started knocking on the billion dollar door because of how bad everything went with shipping and paying people and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Redesigns, all that <clears throat> stuff. The Red Ring of Death was a crazy occurrence. And like people were doing like weird shit to make sure it didn't happen. Like apparently, like people found out that you could wrap it in a towel and then play it and it was fine because like it heated up evenly or something something like that but i want to alex i want to bring something up to you i don't Mm -hmm. think i told this on the show and if i did uh forgive me but so me and my dad had the original 360 model right we're playing it we're enjoying we're having fun hanging out don't remember the specific game but we're you know we're i think it might have been grand theft auto 4 something who knows we're playing it and uh my dad goes you smell that? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, it smells funny. I, I don't know. He's like, something burning? Like, can you go check the kitchen or something? And we're far from the kitchen, so we both don't think it is, but I'm like, sure, I'll go. 
And like, I, I, and you know, I, I go to I go to my uh, grandmother. We were living at the time, and I go, "Is something burning?" She's like, "No, nothing's cooking." I'm like, "Okay." I go back, and and my dad goes like, "I think it's th- it might be the system." And I was like, "What?" Alex, we grab the system, we take the system out, we look. The power cable is melting. <laughs> so the connector to the box. So, um, achievers, picture the th- original 360, big old white boy, big old white system. Now the, the power box, now the cable going to the system, the, the like a million circle prong uh, cable that was going in the system was actively melting in the system. Not like, oh, it got kind of hot. No, 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 no. It melted. It was melting. It was in the process of melting the plastic. It got so hot in there. Uh, so my dad contacted Microsoft. Uh, they replaced it. It happened again. The amount of times you can get a free system because of that. It happened again. Yeah, because they were doing like free replacements. Mm-hmm. But it happened in a different way. So we had, um, I think, a backup cable. Mm-hmm. And what we did was, and what, well, I say we, my father did all this. He sent a system because that red ringed. And mm-hmm. then he sent a power cable because that was also having issues. But they wanted you to send it separately, I believe, mm-hmm. for whatever reason. He did this, and we got it, and we got back two pretty big boxes. We're like, that's weird. Cut it open, 360, and one box. Okay, cool. This is our 360, our new 360. I'll go hook it up. We open the other box, Alex. There's just a whole other 360 in it. <laughs> so I don't know what over there was happening. I don't know why, but they sent us in a whole another 360. We got another system now. So we, now we have two systems in this house. Uh, at the time, of course, and then we just got a free 360. Now that now the only downside is this free system didn't come with a power cable, so my dad had to go buy a power mm-hmm. cable. He was like, he was just fine with that. He was like, hey, you have a 360 now. That's how I got my 360, like to my room. <laughs> I was always using my dad's. He was like, here, you can have it. So mm-hmm. uh, that's how I got a 360 in my room. Now, are you aware that there is uh three to four different types of red rings? Yes, because it tells you what Each error is happening. Different- Mm-hmm. It tells you if it's the power. It tells you if it's the mm-hmm. connectors so or something. One. So as everybody knows, yeah. the 360 has four lights. Yes. The first ring, hardware failure in the hard drive. Yeah, that is a bad. That's bad. Mm-hmm. That's like two rings it's fucked. Is overheated. Yeah. <laughs> Three rings is general hardware failure. It's is usually the red ring of death. It's it's dead. It's the, 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 usually the default one. Yeah. And then four rings is a AV cable isn't plugged in all the way. Mm-hmm. If you're getting the three rings, is usually the infamous one. Yep. Yeah. If you're getting the three wing, rip. Put it down. Yeah. Put it down mm-hmm. before it starts barfing all over itself. But Crazy. yeah, I wanted to bring that up. Alex, did you experience any of the red ring phenomena? Oh, yeah. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. I um I actually fixed one. <laughs> um I think it was the regular red ring, uh the the three. And it was um something that I then you and it was like, hey, I got this, you know, from a um uh, auction or whatever, like those auction storage bins, and there's a three sixty in there, and I know you like video video games. Can you fix this? I was like, All right, let me figure this out. I look at it, I click it, red ring. All right. Look the power cord, it's plugged in, everything's plugged in, it's still doing it. I start taking the system shell apart. Now, mind you, it's the white <laughs> Xbox, so it's like kind of like it looks like I'm literally destroying this thing. Yeah. I go in there. For some reason, where the hook or like the the where the power cord plugs into onto the motherboard, for some reason that was bending inside the motherboard. I don't know, like it was weird. So I probably was melting. Started, I was started moving. I started moving stuff. Uh, so I like moved it back just to make sure it wasn't hitting anything. I had it. Um, I tried it again. Still was doing it. I take. I, so I switched the one cable that you said yours melted. Works perfectly fine. I was like, I did all that just to change a cable. Cool. All right. Well, it works yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, and it worked. It was weird. All right. Well, there's that. Alex. Mm. 
we can talk so much about the show 60 on and on and on mm. um i think i'm gonna call an audible here <laughs> there's gonna be a part two to this uh we have not even touched the surface of the xbox one not only the importance not only the rise of grace from 360 but the downfall of xbox one that is we I, we don't have enough time to really dig deep as as much mm-hmm. as I want to dig deep in that. So we're gonna we're gonna call an audible here, Chiefers. We're gonna save Xbox One as a part two. So we're gonna do a part two to this episode. Um, when we finish the 360 talk, and we're gonna pick up with the Xbox One rise and fall of that. I really fall and rise. It's really a fall, 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 fall trip rake hit in the face then they start to kind of hobble away <laughs> anyways 360 mm-hmm. we've covered the different uh arcade games that we enjoyed some launch systems they're really the early years is still where we're at i want to start getting into the mid to late where we're starting to really get to know this 360 but also we're starting to see what's ahead and we started right at the cusp of that slim model. That was kind of the first time um, that I had experienced in like, hey, here's an upgraded like thing. Here's like a new way to enjoy your system. This is like a cool like slim model. Mm-hmm. And my God, it looked cool. I saw Alex, do you remember how they revealed this thing? I don't. It's so been a while. E3 2009. Or 2010, I don't remember which one. The guy, I don't remember who it was, but someone was up there like, oh, you know, Xbox 360 is so cool. Here's some like trailers and stuff. And the whole time in the middle of the stage, he had a 360, what we thought was just a 360, the white system. Mm -hmm. And um, and near the end of the show, he picks up the shell and there's a slim inside of it. Does it really not shine? This is the slim. Mm-hmm. Alex, <laughs> as I a kid, that. that was the coolest thing to see because I saw it like natively, like on TV through G4 TV, mm-hmm. watching E3, and I was like, "Whoa, oh my god, that there it is! Oh, like it's a new system! Holy god!" And I'm freaking out, such a cool reveal. Um, and I think I got that like almost immediately. I think my dad bought it for me almost immediately when it got released. Same. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, there's a new system," and he was like. Literally walked up. He was like, "Hey, scoot over." Got on my computer. I see his taking out his card, puts it in. And he's like, "All right, it'll be here next week." Nice. And I was like, "Oh, oh all right." <laughs> nice. And uh, yeah, we kind of already uh, touched on that new update, but we really have to touch on that new 2011 update because a new dashboard came with this system. Mm-hmm. 2011. Yep. 2011. That was called. They didn't. Oh, what? Oh my god. Uh, Alex, if you can find the update for me, that'd be great, because I don't remember what it was called. Was it the next update? No, that was Xbox One. You'll find it. Um, but yeah, that, that's when we got a kind of newer update. That's when you got the tiles, right? Not the, not the like Windows 8 tiles, but like the big sliding tiles, right? No, no, that was, that was the one before. That was the one before. This this one is with the Windows Eight one, where it's 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 like a couple by a bunch of tiles, and then you tab over and it goes, whoosh, and then it's like another section of tiles, and it goes to the next one. There's like a bunch of them, and the the one before it was the one where you can go up and down with a bunch of tiles, and you can go up and down, or and then you can go left to right with a bunch of tiles. Okay, that was the one before. Okay, Are you, okay, I thought it was the opposite. Mm-mm. I looked it up. Okay. You you know more. <laughs> I could swear that it was the opposite, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm tired. It's very late, Chiefers. I don't know if you understand how late it is where we are, but we are very tired. But uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the uh, kind of mid. I mean, mid generation. This is when we're starting to. There's no name as I could see. It just says 2011. 2011 update. update. Yeah, that's fine. Not too important. Yeah. Anyways, Alex. Hmm. Anything kind of speaking to you in this kind of mid year? I remember Dead Dead Space Two was a big deal for me um, around this time. Modern Warfare Three Ooh. is another one. 
Yeah, 2011. Oh, God. Brings back... Th- oh, oh, for 3 Jesus. was uh, 2013. Uh, hmm. yeah, that's not right. Sorry, Let's 2011 see. was Modern Warfare 3. I think it's the first time I played Catherine. <laughs> <Remember that game? laughs> I, I didn't play yeah i do I, I did not play Catherine. i, I played a little yeah. bit of Catherine, not much fucking crazy game oh i'm surprised you didn't mention this what dragon age 2 dragon age is an incredibly important game uh to me and of course the mass effects are too i mean you brought me the, into dragon age because i've mass, never played them mass effect was an early 360 game um that came out of course made by Made uh, by uh, uh, Casey Hudson. I don't know, man. 83, 2011? Uh, 2007. November 20th, 2007 for the original Mass Effect. Fucking mm. great game. Um, I only played a little bit of it before Mass Effect 2. I played it like a year or two before Mass Effect 2. Because <clears throat> um, I remember the E3 where they were announcing Mass Effect 2 was a continuation of 1 and Shepard didn't die, which was the rumor going into mm-hmm. it. Oh, excuse me. The Shepherd yeah, had already died. So many games in this year that I was that it was like Dead Island. For the first Dead Island was 2011. It was that that was mind blowing. Because I loved zombie games and it was mixed with Mirror's Edge, and I was like, oh, it was so cool. Modern Warfare Three, mm-hmm. which uh, stunned me visually, because um, that was the World War Three one. You got to go to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower fall. A bunch of crazy shit was going on. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, all the crazy stuff. I, I loved that game, and, and like you said, Mass Effect Two, very important. Of course, m- closer to the end of it, but we get Mass Effect Three and the drama with that. Of course, with the ending, kind of the first time. Honestly, I, I was a, I was kind of, I wouldn't say I was a part of, more of a witness to internet drama inside of Mass Effect Three. I feel like that was the first time I really witnessed an entire community get fucking pissed off, <laughs> and like just get really mad at an ending. That's what mm. happened. Everyone just got really mad. I got to kind of part- again. I'm using the word participate. I I didn't participate. I, I just I monitored. I got to watch uh, the podcast that I enjoyed, Podcast Beyond, talk about it. I got to watch mm-hmm. a couple IGN people that I was watching. Um, I think I was watching Game Scoop at the time. Um, did like react like, yeah, the ending was like either good or you know, people are like, eh, it was really cool. Oh, it sucked. Blah blah. blah. Oh. Oh, oh no. what, Jesus. What? I forgot that I forgot this game was that year. Skyrim. Yes, 2011. November, November 11th. 11th tw- mm-hmm. That is um 10 years old oh. yesterday as of recording. Technically mm-hmm. yesterday cuz now it's 12:50 uh our time. Mhm. Oh, very tight. Um, oh, and no. Uh, there's only one me. more game but we'll- Dark Souls. Yes, Dark Souls. That is that game was just it's, like a complete because I never I didn't know what any of that was about because I never played Demon Souls and, and I, I want to bring that up. So what a big so many games! Oh my god, uh, Dark Souls! Uh, yeah, it, it really is. Uh, Dark Souls. Uh, what are you using? Really quick, so I know I'll use it too. Um, it's a, it literally says what to play dot com and best of the best of three hundred and sixty games of twenty eleven. Okay, I can send you the I can send you the website. Yeah, yeah, can you just send? It to me? Thank you. But uh, going back to Dark Souls, really quick. It's on Discord. Thank you. Um, um, going back to Dark Souls, though, yeah, I mean, Demon Souls, of course, important. It's what mm-hmm. from it's what started from Soft. Um, mm-hmm. Apparently, the rumor was uh, they were gonna stay with Demon Souls, but then uh, 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 PlayStation let them go, which I'm mm-hmm. sure they're kicking themselves for letting that studio walk. Uh, but they went mm-hmm. and made Dark Dark Souls, and the rest is history. They started an entire genre basically oh souls like souls born whatever yeah, you want to call it game. yeah souls yeah. born souls games i mean there's it's it, that's and that's where it began it changed everything similar to oh, mass effect sure. where it kind of made this whole new system of communication with your characters mm-hmm. we're seeing that now with guardians of the galaxy i mean guardians of the galaxy where... literally has a mass effect mode when you go onto a ship it's mass effect when you hit a ship side mm-hmm. point dark souls transforms everything and um uh and they uh waste no time in very quickly getting some releases out because uh they immediately go into then dark souls 2 and so on and so forth mm. yeah 2011 was big for games like i was i was just going back 
I mean, Portal 2, Gears 3, Dead Space 2, Saints Row the 3rd, Bulletstorm. Like, I mean, not a lot of people like that, but, like, it was, it was an interesting game. Yeah. I mean, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. You said that's when you first time played Halo. Yeah, it Combat was. Combat Evolved. Yeah. Ooh, Alex. Arkham, Arkham City. City. Arkham Arkham City. Arkham City, Alex. I was just saying it. <sighs> Arkham City. This was on the cusp of the MCU popularizing comic books. And these games, the Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, really made me feel kind of good because I was like, okay, comics are starting to really breathe. And I love that. I love that these games are going to be like kind of shown and people get to look at the Batman characters and enjoy them like I do because I really do feel like similar to how Invincible is going on with the cartoon show. This was kind of some of the thing where it's like, all right, cool. Whole a bunch of people who are never going to read a comic book in their life are now going to play a video game and know what I like. That's very cool. Yep. Uh, Mortal Kombat. This is the first time I kind of experienced a Mortal Kombat. Technically Mortal Kombat 9. L.A. Noir, But just called Mortal Kombat. L.A. Noir is such a game. That is such an interesting game. I remember when I played it, I couldn't rem- I struggled, like, do I like this? And I eventually settled I loved with, it from, from the beginning. I, I eventually settled with, I do like this, but I need caveats. Like, mm. I, I wish there was a different way of figuring out if someone's lying versus just them going... Yeah. Yeah, that is. It, it was, Am it, I lying? <laughs> it's like, it, it's, uh, well, it was weird because for 2011, those facial expressions were it like. It was. This is, this is the feature. Well, uh, it was. And also, Rockstar, I feel like it was just Rockstar being like, we can make cool shit. Look at this. Mm-hmm. Look at our facial animations. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. He's emoting. Look at that emotion. He's like, oh, am I lying? Back, uh. back, back when Battlefield was good, Battlefield 3. Ooh. Spitting that fire, Alex. Oh, yeah, I have to. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. Uh, Portal mean, 2, like, another special game. For that's what yeah, I said, yeah, so much, dude. So much. It's crazy. The first time we would see a non bungee Halo, Halo 4. Mm hmm. Probably 3 for 3. Moving on. <laughs> oh, my God. And, Alex, really quickly. Um, this is Gears also kind of this is like me- meta gaming for the achievers. But just did you did you see the difference on how we reacted with all the other ones? And I just said, "Oh, the first Halo without Bungie, Halo Four," and we sat here in silence. <laughs> this game was wild because I didn't think this would ever be like a thing. Because you know I loved Guitar Hero, and I was like, I want to be able to do it with a real guitar. Rocksmith. Mm. Did you enjoy Rocksmith? You seemed like I like did. you liked it, but you're like, eh. I, back then, when I first did it, because I was practicing guitar more, I loved it. Not right now, because I, I want to try the new one, I, I played the demo a little bit. I suck at the game. Mm. I mean, I, I've been out of practice for so long. I'm over here like the like easy mode guitar hero. Like, all right. All right. Like, I... I Dude, it's hard. But like at the time, dude, I loved it because I was like, oh my god, I could connect my guitar to the game. Like it was so cool. Right now, Alex, I'm in twenty twelve. Mass Effect three, which of course started all that debacle. But I wanna I wanna bring to your attention two th- uh uh not it's not sorry, not two things, technically five things, five games. Okay. But really one game. Walking Dead okay. season one. Oh boy. We met Lee. Wait. We're playing. And we got to experience that emotional tale with him, with Clementine. Oh, I cried. And this was one of the first times I found my I found myself very much emotionally attached, later finding myself even more emotionally attached in a game like Last of Us. But this is the very I would I would really point to this as like I became so attached to a character that I was moved to tears at the end. Which is something that never happens in video games. This was the first time I cried in a video game, for a video game, like for a character. I think this is, I believe this is the first time. I, uh, yeah, same for me. The ending of this game, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think this is the first time, and I, and I bawled. Yeah, it's very sad. It was very sad, and, um, yeah, it, the, I don't, if you didn't play the game, please go play it. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Just in case we do have an achiever out there that hasn't played the games yet, but please, they are short, 
You can beat it all in about 10 hours, maybe even less. And you won't regret it. I promise you so, won't. Great games. Fantastic. Uh, so we find ourselves in 2013, unless you see something in 2012, but 2013, I mean, we're in the last year. <laughs> 2013. And the hmm. Final Five. Alex, uh, really, quickly, at that. <laughs> really quickly, I, hmm. I mean, this might be one of the most important games to have launched in the last 10 years. Right, in the last Final yeah. Five. Because um, it's still going. It's still going, and it's showing a change of tide. It's showing that games as a service works. Now, of course, this release would not tell you that, um, especially at first. So they originally were going to release Grand Theft Auto Online very soon once the game came out, but delay after delay would have to push it. Push it. And even when it did finally release, it was myriad, a myriad of difficulty actually establishing the online in any cohesive way of playment. It was a mess. So mm -hmm. it, it, it took so long for them to really get it off the board. But when it got off the board, Alex, no game in the history of video games, aside from maybe Tetris, is as successful as Grand Theft Auto V and I still don't believe Tetris is as successful. This game's online service is probably done way better than all their other games combined. Grand Theft Auto, just so everyone knows, in the last month, Grand Theft Auto V sold 5 million copies. I will tell you right now, developers would shoot someone in the face to be able to sell 5 million copies even a month after their game launched. Grand Theft Auto V has been out since September 17th of 2013. It has amassed over 160 some odd million units. We are in the obnoxious territory of Grand Theft Auto V where it's just like, you just assume it's a millions of units every month. Honestly, I feel like that's why they haven't gone to GTA 6 because they're scared that it's going to get ruined. Like, if they go to GTA 6 and don't do it as good or don't keep the online the same, I feel like they're like, oh, we're going to lose all our fan base. If I could flip a coin or be a fly, whatever, I would love to talk to high, high execs at Rockstar and really ask them, what is the plan? It's almost a lose, 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 lose. Like, one situation... Let's make a sequel to Grand Theft Auto 6. Well, do we keep the online? Uh, yeah, well, yes, but it's different because we want you to restart because we want you to buy new stuff. And they're like, eh, okay. That, hey, you have to do that in a very specific way to not make people feel cheated. Because we're also kind of moving behind sequels. People are just mm -hmm. kind of preferring you just keep with the stuff. Warzone, for example. Fortnite, for example. So, or you make a new, whole new system, and you forget everything. That's a that's an option. You make a new game, but you bring everything over. And now you have a, now you have two player bases. One that has all the stuff from Grand Theft Auto Five. One that just started with Grand Theft Auto Six, and like the middle where like they played a little bit of Five and some. Of, I don't envy them. Is a very hard decision to figure out what the fuck to do with the sixth game. What do you even put a single player? Hell no! You make so much money off the line online. Why even make a single player game? Because they can. Because they can. That's a good question. That's a good, sorry. Not that's a good answer. That would be my answer when uh and some. Honestly, I don't think it, honestly, I don't think they would lose money for putting a single player in it. Single player is what brings people online. Makes them stay. I think, in my opinion, yeah. I think. I think now. Do they lose sales if they don't put a single player in it? They do, but not enough to for them to not care. Not enough. Not enough for them to care. But I think you put single player just just to no. appease the small base that's gonna care. No. Would you buy the only if it let's say GTA six is online only, would you mm. pay sixty, seventy dollars for it? Mm, would I pay sixty dollars for an online only? What what's uh, like how I, when you say online like, only is an MMO? Excuse me. Is it excuse me, excuse me. G gta online and let's say it's a whole let's say it's a new map instead of the the the, the california looking one from gta 5 it's a whole new map but it's 
the the game is online. It's it's GTA Online. Just uh, there's a new map because it was updated. It, it's doing the thing like Fortnite does, where it just the, the yeah, map. Yeah, it's changed. a new thing. Yeah, but there's no story. Would you pay sixty to seventy bucks for that? Okay, in this world, I'm assuming I am not doing this podcast because I would say yes, just because I have to play it for this. <laughs> so assuming I'm not doing that, um, I would say no. If it is the online that is in Grand Theft Auto Five, because I hate how that plays, it feels awful. Whenever mm. I try to shoot something, it feels terrible. When I played <laughs> with you and your brother, um, it was terrible. <laughs> like the way you shoot, the way you move, the way you run, mm-hmm. it's fucking terrible. It's awful. I, I don't know why anyone likes that. It's awful. <laughs> they need to change how they. They need to change their almost entire control scheme. The only thing they have right is how you aim and how you shoot. Why do you run with tapping A? Fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? Ah, Sorry. Blacked out for a second there. Where am I? Bioshock Infinite. March 26, 2013. Very, very phenomenal game. I love that game. Love that game. Not quite what we wanted, but I wasn't disappointed. It was a new take. You could you can't do Bioshock again. So they didn't. Yeah. They did Bioshock Infinite, which is different. Not a lot of people liked it. They said, Oh, why is this a shooter now? And I'm like, I mean What? Why? Like hey, Bioshock was One was also a shooter. Do you mean it's not survival horror enough? Do we really want Bioshock again, but in the sky, but still scary? I like this kind of faster thing. Cause like you're in the air. So why not have this kind of high mobility feeling with the claw system and you're swinging on mm-hmm. the rails and shit? I don't know. I feel, I feel like people were a little too hard on Bioshock Infinite, just like they were a little too hard on Bioshock 2. People, mm-hmm. people were a little too hard on those games. Those were fantastic games. We were comparing it to Bioshock 1, which I don't blame them. I don't think it's anyone's fault that they were disappointed in the game, but mm-hmm. I didn't want the same game again. Uh, Saints Row 4 was a win. Uh, my one of my favorite Assassin's Creed next to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but my favorite 360 Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Oh, Loved that game. Such a good game. Yep. Got to be a pirate. Got to be able to stab people. Mm-hmm. Splinter Cell Blacklist. We didn't know at the time, but that would have been the last Splinter Cell for a now. I mean, we're looking at a 10 year period because we're not getting a Splinter Cell in two years. So it's going to be 10 years between releases of Splinter Cell games. Alex, it's going to be 10 years for these things. What in the... F- Anyways. Um, Injustice God Among Us was very special. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many, but that... I mean, we're done with 2013. We're... That's it. I mean, that's... And that's we get the, the of- Xbox One system in the next year, so that is the end of the 360 era. We skipped a couple updates to the dashboard, but um, I, we really hit the most important one, which was that 2008, which really changed a lot for me, brought the Avatar system, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But A separate episode needs to be had for our top 10 360 games. So I'm not going to ask you that, Alex. <laughs> but this is kind of our final thoughts. Something that you want to leave with the Achievers as the end of our 360 look back on the past... For the Xbox 20 anniversary. What is... Is there something that we may not have touched on? Or there's something that you kind of want to remember? This could be an I, achievement. I want to... A game. Something mm. that you liked. That a feature that you liked. That you're like, oh, we didn't talk about this with the 360. What? Is there something you want to leave with the audience? I want to say... That the 360 is arguably... One of or the best console. That, that's come out. That... Like they, they like they had to, like for me, I the 360 I had the most fun with throughout uh, with any other than any console I've ever had. I think the 360 had a lot going for it. Not only did it yeah. have phenom, I mean, those years that we just went over are some of the best years that we've ever had in video games. Mm-hmm. Not only did it have I mean, fantastic games, were created created us as gamers, and it did. It was it is, and we have a soft spot for that because of that. But of course, we mm-hmm. have biases, and just like any human does. Yeah. Not only did it do all of that, but it had a great blend of UI. It had a great blend of metagaming with achievements. 
gamer score, the avatar systems, the theming system on the on the system. It, it just it. We forgot one. Some, we forgot one more important thing. The most comfortable controller. Mm, Who the could? O- the only fault that that 360 mm-hmm. and it's perfect in every other way. The only fault is the D pad. Terrible D pad. Yeah, I was completely fine with the D-pad. You don't, you don't play 2D platformers. That's why. Mm. You don't play Castlevania. You play Castlevania, that thing's dead. Sorry, my, uh, uh, you know, the little robot Roomba? vacuum just started. Yeah, it just started randomly talking. So you let me just, put yeah, that back yeah, up. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's creepy as fuck because I just started hearing a disembodied voice go, I am I'm I was like, yeah. oh, fuck. Alex uh, is dead. I'll be back. Continue. He's, he's leaving. Yeah, it's fine. He'll be right back. As I was saying, um... Yeah, I had a, a fantastic uh, basis of this <sighs> UI. We had fantastic gaming come out for this thing. I mean, my God, like those years that we just went over, that's some of the strongest that we've ever seen in uh, all of gaming, period. Then we have the seamless addition of these apps, these movies that we're starting to see like, hey, this thing doesn't just have to be something that plays video games. This can play your movies. This can play a TV show. That's something I started developing too. I started watching Naruto. I started buying some of the seasons. I started watching Dragon Ball Z on this thing when I had a couple extra bucks. Bought some seasons of the shows or an episode or two and just started enjoying it as a like multi-service system. And I loved that. Um. Uh, again, again, Alex, uh, uh, you, you had to go, but what was it uh, that you uh, wanted to end with? Was that basically? Oh, I mean, I just yeah, I think it's just the 360 was just an amazing. Yeah, console. it was an amazing I mean, console. I mean, no matter its faults that it had at the beginning. Of course. Any, I mean, it has its faults with the slim. I mean, the touch, man. I would slap it with my toe, slide it with the, and it was just turn Dog off. Dog walks by it. Oh my god, Blink. that happened. Like, my cat hit with its tail, and it just turned off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it happened but, to me too. If you and you didn't even have to touch it, really. Like if it just felt the warmth like, of your hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot yeah. of issues, but. What uh, what awesome. is what is love, but persevering? I'm gonna end it with that. Vi- oh God, your dog's doing the thing again. <laughs> yes, of course I can hear it. He's dying. What? I mean, what? A- <laughs> and on that note, you too. <laughs> it's fine. On that note, achievers, we can go out with the nice humming of. <laughs> <laughs> The Xbox 360, what a phenomenal machine. We'll never forget you. You were great. Achievements, gamer score. You really popularized the Xbox ecosystem. Uh, we can all say the Xbox was a fantastic system, but the 360 is what catapulted into a mainstay, and it really did show PlayStation that, like, hey, this is this thing's here to stay. This wasn't a fad that Microsoft did, uh, which we kind of all assumed was, but they actually made <laughs> another system, so that it wasn't a fad, so that was good mm-hmm. for us. But yeah, it's something I treasure, uh, and I do love the 360. We'll have um, we'll have a bigger discussion of what the 360, how it affects the 2014 Connection. system, the Xbox One, and how that played into the decision of what they're doing there, and all the shakeups and the, and things of the of the like. So, technically, 2013 at the end of it. Technically, technically, technically. technically. Yeah, just just trying to save you from some 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 correction. Okay, yeah, technically, but really, it's twenty fourteen. It's like two months. Anyways, <laughs> achievers, I really appreciate you sitting with two hours straight with us with this fantastic show. I had so much fun. Sorry mm. that we went long in the tooth, but I imagine none of you are going to care. This was a very fun Xbox discussion. Loved looking back on the three hundred and sixty. Had so much fun. I can't wait to talk Xbox One with you, Alex. Mm. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, although I do love the 360, it won't be my, my number one or number two in part two of this. I'll tell you why. Thank you so much, Achievers. Remember, all the good stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Five stars on the podcast server your choice. Patreon.com slash Achievers if you want to support us financially. We thank each and every one of you for any sort of service you give it, whether it be free or financially. Thank you so much. On that note, me and Alex... Are gonna go sign off because we're very tired. 
Oh, I'm I go Guardians. And yes, you have like 40 minutes left. You're going to go finish that game. I'm going to go mm-hmm. pee because I have to pee very bad. And I'm thirsty <laughs> because I've been talking for two hours straight with very little water. <laughs> this wasn't filled enough. This is way too much ice. You hear that? There's way too much ice in there. Not enough water. I messed up. Mm-hmm. Messed up. But it's on me. Achievers, you know what to do. I very much appreciate you. I'm going to go get more some more achievements. Yep. Lest we forget, go Chief. Go Chief.